So esters are um, things that we encounter, perhaps unknowingly, but in our everyday lives. Many of the flavors and fragrances of fruits and flowers are due to esters. Um, there's generally going to be a mixture of esters with one predominating. And so when, they, when you may have a natural flavoring versus um, a man-made flavoring or artificial flavoring, that predominant ester is going to be the same, but you might be missing some of the um, other esters in there. And the structures of these esters are closely related to, an, uh, to each other. So I don't know about you, but I don't think that apples and pineapples taste at all the same. And yet the flavor, the ester responsible for their flavor, dis differs only by one carbon. One is a methyl group and the other has an ethyl group. And that completely changes the flavor. So here's a table showing some of the esters um, and the flavors that they have. So you know, this guy is the flavor of raspberry, it's isobutyl methanolate. Um, here's the apple and the pineapple. So it's all the same, except this is a methyl butanoate and this is ethyl butanoate. Small difference. Um, a big result. So f what do you need to know from this? I think you should know that esters, or that many of the flavors of fruits are from esters. I'm not going to make you know any of those specifically, but I think it's just kind of interesting. Oh, look at that. Because when, when, if we see names like this, we think, ooh, chemical, right? Propyl ethanoate, ooh, I don't want that in my food. Yeah, well, it's in the pears. The pear tree makes that. So is it bad just because we gave it a chemical name? No, it isn't. Um, other common esters are pheromones. Pheromones are sex hormones. Um, many of these have ester functional groups. So this is isoamyl acetate, and you don't need to know the name of that. Sort of a gee whiz, that's interesting sort of thing. This is the alarm pheromone for honeybees. So when a honeybee sends out this isoamyl acetate, all the other honeybees understand, hey, this is dangerous, something bad's going on, and that's when they start stinging you. So you, you definitely wouldn't want to walk around with that on your clothes or anything, right? This is a sexual attractant for canine species, dogs. Methyl para hydroxybenzoate. So, you know, we can kind of look at these names here. This is where we would chop it to name it. Here's the methyl. And what would this be? Well, this is hydroxybenzoate. This is benzoic acid, and it's got a hydroxy group on it. And so, dogs are really big into that stuff. Um, medications. A lot of uh, esters have medicinal values. Benzocaine is an ester. So it's got a benzene ring here and this NH2 group. We haven't learned about those yet. But here's the ester part. Benzocaine, local anesthetic. And then aspirin and oil of wintergreen. These are kind of interesting. So these are both esters of salicylic acid. This is salicylic acid. Here we see the, the uh, acid part of it and it's a hydroxy acid, right? That would be what, I guess you could call it a beta-hydroxy acid, but it's, it's aromatic. So if you take that salicylic acid and react it with acetic acid, and again, I'm not going to test you on these reactions, this acetic acid will react with the hydroxyl group on the salicylic acid forming aspirin. Because this has the alcohol and the acid group, right? So if we take an acid, it can react with the alcohol group. So here we get aspirin. If we react salicylic acid with methanol, this alcohol reacts with the acid group, and we form this guy. It's an ester also. And this is oil of wintergreen. Now both of these have a function of pain relief. Aspirin you're going to take orally, and in your body, 
your body metabolizes the aspirin to salicylic acid. This is what causes the pain relief. Oil of wintergreen is typically rubbed on the skin. It's absorbed through the skin, but in your body, it's hydrolyzed to form salicylic acid. So when you rub it on your skin, um, I don't know if it's icy hot or, or which of those have um, oil of wintergreen in them, but it's a more localized pain relief than taking aspirin by mouth. But they both, they both produce the salicylic acid in your body. It's kind of interesting. There's a whole little blurb about aspirin and how it works. Um, there's a, a group of antibiotics called macrolide antibiotics. And so we talked about the lactones and naming those, and we put olide on the end of the acid name, right? So these are macrolides, meaning they're big. So this is the structure of erythromycin, which is um, a widely used antibiotic. And there's some stuff hanging off here, this R group and this R prime group. Those are carbohydrate units, so those are kind of big things, and we just left them off for clarity. But this is a 14-carbon ring here. But here we see right there, there's the ester functionality right there. So this ester, these esters are, are really useful. 